I'm back. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh my god. It's so good to be back. It's so good to you know come back to filming. Welcome back to today's video. My name is Sandra and welcome to my archive. If you're new on this channel, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Welcome to my archive and my OGs. Thank you so much for coming back again to today's video. For those of you that are away, I had a procedure done on my legs and um last week and so recovery has been really hard it's still very hard but um thankfully i'm back here um to you know share my experience with you guys and what better way to come back than to come back with a story time of what happened when i had my surgery and this story time if i i want to blast some people so um you guys know me i don't know how to lie i'll tell you guys how it happened so if you have pen if you have viral paper just take it and drop it down because i'm going to be listing it point by point for you guys so that you know anywhere that i'm wrong tell me that me i'm wrong anywhere that the other person is wrong say the other person is wrong um yeah so let us get right into the video please don't forget to like subscribe and um, you know comment on this video again thank you so much for your love your prayers those of you that reached out to me those of you that called me those of you that sent me messages i really 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 do appreciate i'm recovering and yeah we'll just take it up from here so yeah let's get right into the story so i'm going to start off this story time by saying that if you notice any anomaly in your body if it's pain, if it's, oh, a certain part of your body is not looking the same way, please go and get it checked out. If you just wake up and you notice that, oh, this thing on my body is not feeling the same way, please go and get it checked out. Because if you guys could remember, sometime in December last year, some of the vlogs I uploaded, I was complaining about my big toenails paining me. Pulse and blood was coming out of my big toenails. I kept complaining about it, but I never got it checked out. And, um, and then, you know, the pain was so much until it got to a point I... You know started i learned how to live with the pain i just stopped wearing certain shoes but you know i just decided to go to the hospital sometime in march because i mean how can i just be feeling pain consistently on this my big toenails so i went to the hospital and then when i went to the hospital that was when i found out that i didn't even just have ingrown toenails i had something called pincer nails it's called pincer nails i'm going to write it up there and um thankfully um, the situation has been arrested. I had to have a total nail avulsion. They had to remove my whole big toenail, just the toenail, and then had to repair the nail bed because my the deformity that my toenail was taking, it was, you know, starting to curve. It was starting to curve. So they had to do a total reconstruction of the nail bed. And yeah, I'm already on my way to recovery and hopefully it doesn't reoccur. Anyway um i know i had complained on twitter sometime like oh okay who knows where i can take out ingrown toenails because these toenails are really you know causing me problems and then um a nurse reached out to me thank you so much amarachi she reached out to me and told me that they did that procedure in their hospital although i ignored it for about two to three months but when the pain became unbearable I had to reach out to her back like please i would i would like to go to the hospital and then we did everything went to the hospital fast forward to i had already met the surgeon that was going to handle my case so the very first day we went and met the surgeon so she was explaining the things that would you know happen that she was explaining what the procedure would be so she was saying oh we're going to remove your toenail entirely your toenail not the toe now your toenail entirely so i was visibly scared i was like when she said that, I was like, like trembling, shaking. And she, the next thing she was do is, if you don't want me to remove it, I'll leave it to. Uh -uh. In my mind, I'm like, yo, you're telling me you're going to remove my toenail. They, like, there's already fear inside of me. Allow me to show fear. Although I did not think anything of it. Like, probably she was having a bad day at the end that it passed. And then um, I went to the hospital the next week, and then they booked me for surgery Friday of that week. Now, when they were booking me for the surgery, the lady had said, be here by 7 a.m. sharp. If you're not here by 7 a.m., if I get to the theater by 7, I don't see you there. I'm not going to do your procedure. Like, you need to be there by 7 a.m. sharp. So I'm like, okay, I don't want to be the reason for, you know, anything. 5 a.m., I woke up with my son. We, we, we set up for the hospital. I got to the hospital by about 6.15, there about. When I got to the hospital, I went to the female surgical ward. I was received by the sweetest nurse ever. Apparently, she even watches this. Um, she watches this um, this channel. So thank you so much, nurse. She was so kind, so beautiful. She made me feel at home. You know, they registered me, prepped me for surgery, and 
everything. As at 7.15, one other nurse took me to the theater. And then I was just at the theater waiting. Mind you, this whole time I thought I had ingrown toenails. I was so afraid. Like, no, I thought I had ingrown toenails. So I really didn't think it was a big deal. In my mind, I'm like, pata pata, I'll just put my leg. They'll use nail cut and cut the thing now. That's like, it's really not a big deal. So when I got to the hospital that day and they were already telling me, put on your hospital gown, put on the cap, you know, do this. I, I can, in my mind, I'm like, she is it more than this ingrown toenail? Go to the theater, wheel me to the theater. I'm like... Is it more than this ingrown toenail? So at this point, fear was already building up in my mind because it was giving when I gave birth to my son, right? So I just kept telling myself, Sandra, don't be scared, don't be scared. It's just, it's just your toenail, don't be scared. So got to the theater, the nurses there as well were so cool, so friendly. You know, they made me feel at home and, you know, they were speaking to me. So at this point, mind you, I'd left my son since 6 a.m., since 6 a.m., you know, I didn't have my phone. I didn't have anything. And at this point, I was already starting to lactate. But, you know, it's okay. They just gave me a tissue and, you know, I put in my boobs there, which was not a problem. But at this point, I was getting really uncomfortable. So up until, um, well, I did hear the nurses there say, who is the consultant? <laughs> this doctor, I'm not going to call names, you know, just in case anyone stumbles on this video. Who is the consultant? Those nurses there were now saying, hmm, this woman, me, I don't like working with this person. Me, I don't like working with this person. Our life is too much. Nothing concerns me. I'm a patient. I just want to, you know, get this over and done with. So, um, apparently, um, we had stayed there for about, I had stayed in that theater, like in the waiting area of the theater for about one hour plus. And then, um, the doctor, the surgeon walked in. And then she walked in and was like, where's my patient? Please, okay, let's go, let's go. And then I followed her and went into the theater and they said, lie on the bed. At this point, my heart was going, it was like, which one is lying on the bed again? It's toenail that is paining me. Why am I lying on the bed? Is it not bad enough that you guys are giving me gown to wear? You are giving me cap to wear? You are doing all this big surgery prep for me. Like, anyway, I laid on the bed. As I was laying on the bed, I was saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I shall not fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I shall not fear. So I kept reminding myself, Sandra, you've gone through worse now. You've had a CS now. Like, why are you afraid? Just, you know, get it together. So, and then I kept myself together. The surgeon came. There were other nurses. You know, everybody were just, you know, doing their stuff. So, the surgeon now said, okay, she wants to numb my leg right now. That is just going to be a tiny prick. So I was like, okay, so she put the needle inside my leg. She put the needle inside my leg. Yes, it was a tiny prick. But at the point of pushing the medicine into my leg, that pain that I felt, I have never felt such pain in my life before. Even when I had an epidural, it did not pain me like that. I never felt such pain in my life before. So when she was, I, God knows, mind you, remember that I had undermined this procedure so much. So I was already agitated. At this point, like, I'm really agitated, like, oh, my God, why did I undermine this surgery this much? So she was pushing the drug, and I'm not even going to lie to you. I tried to hold my own because I kept telling myself, Sandra, you have, you have, you have done CS before now. What is this? Is this, this is small thing compared to CS now. Ah, the, the thing was too painful, so I screamed, and then I'm shouting, like, I want my mother. I want my... <laughs> okay, let me tell the truth. That was a little dramatic there. I was in pain. I'm like, I want my mommy. Mommy, bring my mommy. You don't know the next thing that this woman will do. She just, hey, we don't shout here. We don't shout here. This is a tear like We don't shout here. You're shouting, you want your mommy. Why are you a baby? Uh -uh. Me, I sat up, sat up immediately. Like, I don't understand. If we don't shout here, granted, if you don't shout here, I can understand. But which one are you shouting at me? But you're doing something that is paining me. I'm telling you, like, I'm shouting. Like, I'm shouting in pain. And you are shouting at me. Uh, you know what? She now like so I now sat up. I was like, I like I don't get it. Why are you shouting? I mean, like this was me now telling her, like, why are you shouting at me? So she was like, Why am I shouting that this is a theater? Why am I shouting? I now said, I'm shouting because you are doing something that is pinning me. That's why I'm shouting. Like, like am I a mad person that will just start shouting? And then she was like, you know what? You're not ready for this procedure. You're not ready for this procedure. She started cleaning me. I don't know. I think that at that point, I don't know if they had already started making an incision or if it was just, but I knew that I, my leg was bleeding already at the point and they had already pushed the drug in. That, you know what? She's not even ready for all this. That I'm not ready for it. That she's not going to do the surgery. I said, yes, don't do it. Me too. I don't want to, I don't want to do this procedure anymore. 
I don't want to do the procedure anymore. So the nurses and the doctors, the other doctors, they were like, you know, trying to pacify me. The woman was like, why am I shouting? Are they butchers? Do they want to butcher me? Da, da, da. I said, first and foremost, you will not butcher me. There are about eight of you here. You are not going to dare to butcher me. Secondly, if you say that, oh, she did explain that, um, you know, this is a theater. There were other um, theater words there. So if I'm shouting, I'll be putting someone else, you know, like, you know, if I'm shouting, I'm probably, you know, scaring someone else or putting someone else, you know, making someone else agitated. Granted, I can understand that. But what you're not going to do is, is you know, undermine my pain. I am in pain currently. Like, what you're doing is hurting me, is paining me. I'm shouting, you're saying, you know, I should not shout. What do you mean by that? So she was like, she does not like my disposition that like she was telling other, the other doctors. I don't even like her disposition. I'm not going to do this surgery again. I'm not taking on this procedure. I said, yes, very good. You don't like my disposition. I don't like your disposition as well. Please clean my leg. I need to go. See me where they don't put an aesthetic for my body. I could not even move. Even if I wanted to move, I couldn't move. But at that point, I wasn't even thinking. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, what do you mean? Eh, that she does not like my disposition she's not going to do the procedure for me i said yes you don't like my disposition i don't like your disposition as well if there's another consultant please i need another consultant to do this procedure i don't want this lady to touch my leg she's biased and then you know we're going back and forth to each other back and forth to each other so she was telling me what am i shouting that i almost made her prick herself that is she am i a baby what am i shouting i said please i need you to understand like i'm not the one that's supposed to teach you this i'm not the one that's supposed to tell you this this is your profession you meet people with different thresholds every day you are used to this theater you come to this theater every day you are used to you know making incision on people this is not my profession this is new to me if i'm telling you that i'm in pain please i expect you to understand that i am in pain and address the pain accordingly i said doctor you don't owe me compassion i don't expect compassion from you but what you owe me is empathy you owe me empathy you know if i'm feeling pain i need you to you know sit with me and say oh i understand you're feeling pain you may not have the time for that you may not have the time to pander to me you may not have the time to baby me what I expect from you at that point should be silence, not for you to be giving me, me a rebuttal, shouting at me and telling me, hey, am I a baby? Are we butchering me? And telling me that you're not doing the procedure, you're trying to threaten me. I called her bluff. I said, you're not going to do the procedure. Don't do it. Me too. I don't want you to do this procedure. So that's how we started going back and forth with each other that she was not telling look at the way she's shouting at me i said don't say look at the way i don't try to use adults or anything to guilt trip me i don't say look at the way she's shouting at me you started it you are doing something that is paining me i'm telling you that this thing you are doing is paining me and instead of you to empathize with me or don't even say anything you they shout for me like it's making it make sense it wasn't making any sense to me. And then we started going back and forth. So the nurses they were now, you know, begging me that please let that let me not go. At this point, I had gotten up. I was like, please, where's my clothes? I need everything. Call my husband. I need to leave. So she was just there standing there. If she wants to go, she go. I said, please, I need to leave. Clean my leg, bandage my leg. Because at this point, my leg was already bleeding. Please clean my leg, bandage my leg. My leg, I need to leave. So one elderly nurse there, if you stumble on this video, mommy, God bless you, because she was the one that, you know, held me down. I was trying to, you know, pacify me that please let me just stay through the pain. She understands it's painful. Let me just stay through the pain. That that's the most painful part. You know, they just need to numb my leg and, you know, get the procedure started. And then I'm like, I was not, I now turned to the doctor. I said, see what this woman is doing. See what this nurse is doing. What I expect from you. I can understand that you have a busy day. You don't care about me, rightfully so. I don't even need you to care about me. But what you're not going to do is shame me for my pain so i now told her that this is what i expect from you as a medical practitioner this is what i expect from you not to be shouting at a sick patient i mean if so if i was sicker than this would you be shouting at me like this you know so we started going back and forth the nurses other nurses they were now you know begging me that because if, even if i go to another hospital to do this thing this is you know the same procedure that we are i'm going to have to go through so now that they've already started let them just finish it and then at this point it's like i'm so i'm so angry i'm so agitated like i'm i'm even in tears at this point and i'm crying i'm saying what do you mean if i'm in pain you're telling me to not shout what do you mean i should not shout granted i'm in a theater you know i may agitate other people but please allow me to feel pain that was what i kept telling i said doctor please allow me to feel pain because what you're doing right now is shutting my pain up if you're a doctor you're a doctor if your patient is in pain i expect you to treat accordingly to address that pain accordingly Plus, I am entitled to pain-free care. As a patient, I am entitled to pain-free care. So you are, I'm not going to, you're not going to tell me to shut up. 
I understand that there are some procedures that you have to feel pain, like chicken injection, you know, all those things. You need to feel pain. But if I'm feeling pain more than what I bargained for, I am going to talk about it. I'm going to say it. I'm not a dog. I'm not a goat. I'm not a, a cadaver like that does not feel pain. So after the nurse finished speaking to me, I said, okay, I like at this point, I'm not psychologically ready to go through with this procedure. But I need 10 minutes to breathe. Please, I need everybody to leave. I just need to breathe. I need to calm down. I need to know if I want to go through with this procedure. So she's like, yeah, she, she doesn't have 10 minutes. I said, granted, you don't have 10 minutes. I understand. I need five minutes. Yeah, she asked us to do. I said, please, let us meet each other in the middle. I said 10 minutes. She, you don't have 10 minutes. Me, let's give me five minutes. I need to think. I need to, you know, think about whether I really want to do this procedure. So they allowed me. And then I just stayed there. And then the other nurse was now, you know, trying to talk to me, trying to, you know, pacify me and like let me not worry it's not going to be as painful and all that so um yeah that was it and then eventually i laid back down about it at the time i even laid down the anesthetic that they put had already numbed my leg my leg was already feeling really heavy but i'm happy that i let her know that you know i i put her in a place I was happy that i did that because going forward in the surgery she kept asking is this painful is this hurtful how about this is this painful that's what i like i'm not teaching you how to do your job but what i expect from you is empathy and to try to ease and relieve my pain as as much as you can not to cause me more pain i'm here because i'm in pain your job is not to cause me more pain it's to relieve my pain so my brothers and sisters apparently we kissed and made up because every time I go for dressing now, she'll be telling her colleagues, ah, this girl almost beat me in the theater. This girl almost beat me in the theater. Come to find out, when I took the gist back to the nurse that referred me to the place, you know, because I, the nurse was asking me how was my experience, yada, yada. So I was like, ah, don't be smart, you know, me and you people's doctor fought safe. Well, the nurse was like, ah, very good. That it's good that you did that like that because that, that lady is in the habit of, you know, being rude to patients, being rude to our colleagues, being rude to, you know, different people. So because at the point I was thinking like, oh, did I overreact? Did I, you know, did I, did I, was I so much? But after I had heard that, I was like, very good. I'm happy that I did that to you because I'm sure that they would have been, they, she, she just does that, you know, do that to sick people and, you know, she gets away with it. So uh, moral of this story is that, Please, if you're in the hospital, now there's a thin line between fighting for your rights and being overbearing. Please don't be overbearing. Listen to your doctors. They know better. But if you are, if things are moving funny, please stand up and speak up for yourself. Stand up and speak up for your relatives. Okay? So there's this thing I do. If doctors are, you know, working on me or treating me, I, I Google everything. If I don't ask because, you know, I don't want to come off as overbearing. But I just peep, look at the medicine. I try to Google it. I Google the side effect. I do everything. That is what it is to be aware of your health. I am very, very aware of my health. And everything that goes into my body, I read on it. I research on it. I make sure I don't... Doctors, I allow them to do their job, but I make sure to read because these doctors, they deal with 101 people every day. So chances of mistake, like there are chances of mistake. They can be mistaking for somebody else. So it is important that you know what they are doing. It is important that you know exactly what they are giving you so that in case they want to mistake your treatment for another person, so you quickly tell them, you quickly remind them. So uh, brothers and sisters, that's what happened. Although we kissed and made up, but I just said, let me come and gist you guys what that woman did to me and what I did back to her. So let me know, was I wrong? Honestly, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Because at the point, I was now starting to feel like, ah, oh, Sandra, you were too much for this woman. But when I heard that, that's what she does to other people. She does it to her colleagues. She does it to her, her, her other patients. I was like, you met your match today. So let me know, what could I have done better? Number one, what could I have done better? If you're a medic and you're watching this, let me know. Why are you people like this sometimes? Like, why are you people like that? I can understand the work pressure, but sometimes why like why do you people behave as if you are not human beings too? You yeah, let's not be doing like this. Let's be helping one another. So um doctor, if you stumble on this, I am not hating on you. I just want to tell my people what you did to me that I did not like. Anyway, that concludes the story. So um, thank you so much, guys, for you know watching this uh, video and by next week we're going to go back to our regular mommy content thank you guys and until my next upload be well